Today I'm working on my Barn Star Sampler quilt and I am on block number 15. And I wanted to point out, look at this cute, cute shirt I have. It is from um, Maker Valley and I follow those guys on Instagram. So I should have wore this shirt around Valentine's Day, but um, I didn't, I kind of forgot. <laughs> but anyway, so it's cute. I bought it on sale when it was on sale um, last year, like towards the end of the year. So I just wanted to share that with you that it's really cute. It's from Maker Valley. I haven't um, bought any other shirts from them, but I hope to in the future. And now I'm going to start sewing on block number 15. Here's block 15 all laid out. Now on these ones, I didn't have enough fabric of this print. So I am using some white. So some of the blocks will be different. And for block 15, it does say that we will be making three blocks um, and then they will finish at eight inches by eight inches. So I just finished step one and actually this took about an hour to do. Um, between all the sewing and the pressing and now I'm on step two so I will be sewing D and E let's see here's my D's I will sew them to D to E and then once these two are together the D's and the E's I will sew F to them and so that's step two and it looks like this so this is step two, um, and these are not my favorite to make, but here we go, we'll be making them. We have to make four per block. We have three blocks, we'll be making 12 of these. Okay, so I'm sewing D to E. So these are my Ds. I didn't have enough of this fabric, so I had to do two fabrics, and then I'm sewing them to E. Um, but these are not my favorite, because I always feel a little bit um, like directionally challenged on these. I'm always like, okay, which way do they go? How does it work? So I have to really lay them out so I don't mess up. I made a quilt recently um, that had this step and I didn't like it. But I'll push through and I will get this done. Okay, so here's those and I have to sew them to this one. So let's see. I guess it would help if I had all these lined up to begin with. But when you're cutting them, you just kind of stack them up and you don't think about that. Or at least I don't think about it. I just think, hey, I want to get this block cut today. Okay, so here's E. Let's see. So it says, so that's how they're going to be sewn together, just like that. So they'll be sewn just like this. Oh, I guess you guys couldn't even, probably couldn't see me um, putting those out. But so that's how they'll be sewn together. So pretty much just put those triangles together and sew on the short side here. So when it opens up, it looks like that. So here we go. Got a few of these to sew. I'm like really excited to get this quilt done. Like I feel like I'm so close. I know I'm only on block 15, but it just seems like I'm so close to the finish line. You know what I mean? So I am excited. It's kind of a gloomy, rainy day outside, so I feel like the lighting's bad once again. Okay, let's see, did I get that right? Yep, it looks right. Um, I would hate to have to seam rip these, but I guess if I have to, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm still like, I, s I still kind of get turned around. It's kind of weird. It's so weird how this like, you, know, <laughs> you guys, it's really weird. I don't know if you guys have that problem, but that's okay. I just keep looking at the instructions, looking at my sample here. Okay, did I do it right? Oops, sorry, just bonk the camera. Let's see. Yeah, because the, scene, the point has to be at the top, so that's right. 
And now comes the fun part because I have these guys that aren't white. So it's like, okay, is that gonna matter? I don't know. We'll have to see how this quilt comes, this block comes together. Okay, so now I'm sewing these to F. So I'll set that aside, let's see. So they're just going to be sewn like this. So I just put it together and then once I sew these, they should finish at two and a half by two and a half. So I'll take them over to my cutting mat and I will make sure that they um, have lined up. I think I'll actually sew them like this with this fabric on top because I think that'll work best so that I don't get the seam in the way. Actually, does this even line up? This doesn't even seem to be the same size. I'm wondering now if I'm gonna have, going to have to trim a lot off because this isn't even, if you look at this, it's not, um, it doesn't go corner to corner here. So I wonder if I should just kind of center it and then sew. I guess I'll do that. Okay, let's try that. Maybe I should just stretch it out to fit corner to corner. I guess I can do that. It's kind of working that way right now, so let's see. Oh, I'm still sewing my Dresden wedges, so here's the, here they are. Here's a stack of them. Now, I went through, on that Dresden plate quilt, my secondary quilt, I did go through my scraps and got a whole bunch of scraps out, but then um, I did go buy some fat quarters because I didn't have enough scraps, believe it or not or at least enough scraps that I liked for the quilt, the color kind of, the color I was going for. So I want all my Dresden blades to kind of be this kind of bright and fun. And so I picked these up from one of my local quilt shops and these are um, Lori Holtz fabrics. I'm not sure what this, what this goes to or what line this is, but these ones are Lori Holt. I believe all these are from her uh, mercantile line. I'm pretty sure that's what they're from. But anyhow, um, I picked up some fat quarters and just cut them for these wedges because I didn't have enough scraps in like these colors to make enough wedges for my Dresden plate um, quilt. So I've done a little bit of math to see how big I want my Dresden plate quilt to be. And I had to figure out how many wedges I actually need. And so that's what I'm talking about. So I just wanted to share that on block 15, step two, you do have to do a lot of trimming. And so it says to trim your blocks to two and a half inches by two and a half inches, and you do get a lot of trimming. So I wanted to point that out because at first I wasn't sure this triangle here wasn't lining up exactly with these two triangles. So I thought, well, maybe you do have to trim them and you do. So I wanted to share that with you. Okay, so now I'm on step three and it looks like this. So I just have to take, let's see, take these from step two and then sew this rectangle to them. So I will do that. These ones are lining up really nicely, so I don't feel like I have to pin them. So now I'm on the final step of assembling the block. So I'm just going to do that. So G will go in the center. Oops. And then the cornerstone goes in the outer corner of all of these. Like this, so they're in the outer corners. Okay, 
And I'll do the same here. I do two there, oh. and there should be two left. Okay, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so there's my block, and now I will um, sew it up. I think this um, raspberry will be a good pop. Although in their block, they had a lot of raspberry in it. So I'm not sure why I chose all these colors, but oh well, hopefully it all looks together or looks, hopefully it all looks good once it all comes together. start over on that one. <laughs> I don't think I stayed on my seam allowance on that one. Okay, so here's the last step of this block. I am going to piece all of um, these rows together and then sew them up. So there are a lot of seams to match. Like I have to match this seam here, um, then these middle two seams and nothing on this side. So I guess I'll just take it row by row and match them up. Here is block number 15. They're all done. Um, some of them, well, one block I lost a few points in, but it's because I had to square up. When you go to square up these blocks here, see I lost that point there. So that was kind of a bummer. So I'm kind of thinking when you go to square that block up, like pretend this is on your cutting mat and you're squaring it up, instead of trimming from that side, I should have just trimmed from this side. But that's something I didn't think about. So. I'm actually going to pencil that in my pattern so that I don't forget next time. And then over here, I lost this point, but I feel like you kind of have to look close. Um, oh my gosh, this one's really bad. But like I said, when I go to trim, when this block was trimmed up to two and a half inches by two and a half inches, I think if I was to do it over, I'd only trim this side of the block and then leave this side long. Is block 15 in the book. And here are my blocks. I think they're fun. I like the cornerstones, the chaining. It just is so traditional quilting to me. I just love that look. Thanks for watching. See you next time.